What's up, everybody? Um, we're your Cine Nerds, and uh, apparently I'm back. I'm James. I am JP. I'm Ryan, and we did a good job with the dummy of James we told you we were going to bring, didn't we? It's realistic, huh? I didn't even see it. I didn't get to see it yet, to be We honest, didn't make one. We, we, we no, were talking about it. It's just right here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We, we, we brought the best I dummy I was really you could actually, bring. when you texted me that, I was like, I don't need to go anymore. <laughs> Fucking great. Well, just, we, well, we can and Bernie's it. Oh, like, we're still going to make I one. I hate that movie, mm. but you know, it's still funny. We're still going to make I'll one. I'll supply you the Jordan jersey. <laughs> I've got seven of them. And the other part we were going to put on here for your head was going to be the, I have a, uh, that, um, the digital Deadpool head that talks on its own to censor. So, yeah, that was going to be good. Ready take, is there you guys going to take you a year to do it. Well, I could pull that together in five minutes. You're a simple man. You can't even get here on time. <laughs> I, mean, I was here early today, actually. <laughs> Not compared to the text. Yeah. Listen. You said 530. Listen. I was here at 550, and I wasn't supposed to be here until it's because you got nothing better to do. We was sorry. I was actually. I got to make dinner for a family. I was See actually. Along the highway I was and working, deck? and then <laughs> I was going to uh, go to Wayland's and pick up the vinyls because they came in today. Oh. And um, it's always got to be a good feeling. An accident happened uh, that uh, someone hit Julie's son in her car, so they had to go deal with that. So I have to stop on the way home now. I was going to try to surprise JP and bring his home while, while when I came here, but. Yeah, so I went to Sheets, got the best cheeseburger ever. If you didn't know, they have cheeseburgers with three mozzarella sticks on top. Full Sheets. <laughs> so good. Yes, my jokes are. Thank but you. I'm you acknowledged just, I, my joke. No, I'm at a point now where I'm just ignoring we're, those jokes. It's at, We're at the, let's see, 628, 210 mark. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, There's got to be a Star Wars reference in here someplace. We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> There's going to be a Rocky reference. In this review. I, feel so, I need my computer so I just look up stupid shit. What, what are we watching today, James? I picked Slam and Salmon. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Can't talk shit about Broken Lizard. Now, yes, I can. Because I was, listen, I wasn't mad that you picked this one. I was actually excited you picked this one because I hadn't seen it yet. Yeah, I've never seen it. And the Broken Lizard crew, they've got hair messes, but. This is I, this is on the bottom for me. So I haven't looked it up. I haven't, it's been a while since I looked it up. But last time I looked, and I will find it again. But um, last I, I last I saw, this movie actually did better at the box office than Super Troopers. It did, it did. That's because everyone thought the same thing I did. They thought it was going to be good. So initial reactions. So mine, I looked up the, the their highest gross. Their 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 grossing of the Broken Lizard films and. This is their highest grossing film. And but everyone knows them. That, that's the crazy thing to me is everyone knows them the, well, the for thing, Super Troopers. Yeah. And no one even knows this movie exists. The thing is, that's what I was going to say. I'd never even heard of this film. And I was surprised that it had actually grossed more money in the theater than Super Troopers or Super Troopers 2. And after watching it, I kind of, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate this film. It, it's got moments. Don't it's got get me wrong, moments. It's got moments for Broken Lizard. It's like the the first like forty five minutes. I was like, going to say the first half of the movie is it's rough. It's Not rough. only is it rough, but like like this James. This is the best way I could put this analogy for you. It's like when I tell my dad jokes and you sit there for a moment waiting for it to be funny and it just doesn't get funny to you. That's what every... It's like it felt like they were trying too been, hard in every joke. This should have been perfect for you then. No, no, no. That was, that was awful because they were it more... They, their jokes were worse. It got better. Like, to trust me, uh, when we got into nuts turning into Zongo, like, that's where... That's it, when it got good. Yeah. No, uh, so, okay, so here's my here's the thing. I will tell you my favorite part of this whole movie. When he gets the call to go to the TV show... And he puts the coleslaw or whatever that is down his pants. And when he's walking out, he kicks his foot. It just up the up the window. I will laugh at that hysterically every time I see it. I, I laughed way too hard. This is just way at the waitress getting burned every time. <laughs> that was, that <laughs> I, was just, I couldn't stop. <laughs> I was going to say the waitress being burned constantly. But but her her favorite. whole demeanor the whole the whole movie it actually annoys me because she over she's overly trying. Which I know they wanted her to be overly like somebody had to. It was bad. Yeah, I, I did wonder how they got what's her name from How I Met Your Mother to do this movie. Colby Smolders. Colby, that's it. She has the best stage name I think ever. Like she, I was a little surprised to see her. I was happy to see that they had Jim Gaffigan come back for a quick one. Michael Clark Duncan. 
Michael Clark Duncan. He's awesome. And then uh, what's his face? Home Slice. He was reading War and Peace. I don't know his name. I've never looked at, but like, but this was it was cool to see him be different. Yeah. And then he still gets run over by a horse. <laughs> like, did uh, <laughs> did you, did you catch a couple of the reference with uh, uh, Michael Seymour Duncan? Yeah. I, well, with well, one of it was in the in the after credits, but or well, one of them was. Uh, where he said he, he's afraid of the dark. Right. He's afraid <laughs> of the dark. That wasn't that the after credits? Yeah, it may have been. Yeah. Where, no, know, no, no, it's at the end. Yeah. I told you, you know, the cause, dark. Cause he's, cause he's, he's, he's got him pinned up. He's going to yeah. beat Guy up. He, you know? he says he's afraid of the dark, just like his character was in The Green Mile. And did you catch the other one where he says he's from Hill's Kitchen. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah but what is that cool. from? I don't know what King, that is. That's, that's a Daredevil reference. Yeah, he was Kingpin. He played Kingpin in Daredevil. And he was I never awesome. Saw that. Yeah. Like, I, I actually enjoyed him as Kingpin heavily. I loved him as yeah. Kingpin. I actually didn't mind that Deadpool. I mean, Deadpool. Uh, Daredevil, Daredevil movie. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, I mean, I didn't, Colin I mean, the, the cast of this movie was. But then again, I'm going to have that same conversation later today. The cast I mean, was. And then. The cast was great, and then, and then meh, meh. just like America's Sweethearts. It, and it, to your credit... You can say this all you want, I but what was the worst? Of all the ones we have filmed, no, which no. one's the worst? I mean, I heart Huckabee. It <laughs> was fucking spectacular. I can't help that your guys' little brains didn't appreciate the intellectual <laughs> aspects of it. Talking about okay? everybody at this point. <laughs> everybody... I'm going to do a poll, and I'm going to ask people what they thought of I Heart Huckabees. We're going to find out what's what. They're not even going to know what I Heart Huckabees is. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even watch the episode, probably. No. no. I just, I don't know. I, I, the thing is, for me, it's like, you know, but I, I've had this conversation with people. Me and him have had this conversation before. Like, Super Troopers 2. You, if I wrote, on, uh, if I put on Facebook right now, did anyone like Super Troopers 2? I'm going to get just, no, 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 no. I thought the movie... Yeah, we've talked. It's I've a said great I, movie. I, yeah, because I've told you. You don't like, I like it because it. of a girl, though. No, Tyler LeBain. I don't. Oh, you're right. You're right. I don't dislike Super Troopers too. It just did not like. It's it's in the same ballpark to me as Anchorman two and Zoolander two. I it's disagree. Not so good. I disagree. But yeah, no, I like it because of Tyler LeBain. He, play, right. he plays one of the Mounties. Yeah, no, you're right. And I'm a huge Tyler LeBain fan, and I just don't. I think I've just hit a point in my life where, like, I remember when, um, okay, when um, when The Flash came out, and I'm watching everybody put their shit up, <clears throat> and somebody that we all know put up their negative review, and then I'm watching everyone just blast it, and I finally just got pissed off, and I was like, look, can you guys just be happy that we have these movies? Like, you, you, you know, like, can we just, like, the fact that you have... Keaton back as a Batman. The end of it, when you get to actually see Cage in a Superman suit, which we never got to see, you know, like... Or Helen Slater next to Christopher Reeve's Superman as Supergirl. Like, yeah, like, just be happy that we get these movies, because, like, when when um, when um Venom came out, everyone's like, oh, it's not like the com- it's not the comic book. Not- you- Why would you want the exact copy of the comic book? We don't want the exact copy. We want... It to be a live action version of what written comics in some regard. And when they go, it's like, I will forever reference this because it pissed me off so unbelievably bad. When Venom first arrived in Spider Man 3 and he just landed next to Peter Parker's bike, I literally lost my shit. I was, I, like, I don't care how you deliver the story of Venom, but that wasn't the way to go. So, like, those little things get me heated. But when it sure. came to the actual Ven- Venom movies. <clears throat> I mean. The- like, I love Tom Hardy. Yeah, so I, was, Tom, yeah. I, watch, just, I watch them because Tom Hardy is fantastic. But let's in them, just be but, honest I mean, here. They're not that great, but, but they're okay. I, I think they're great movies because of what they are. Because in all reality, did you ever think you'd actually see a Venom movie on its own? Uh, oh, no. I mean, and I'm one of these that grew up in the 90s begging for this these films to be made. I mean, and my then, favorite game in the 90s then, was Maximum Carnage. And then once this stuff is being made, now you got people bitching about it, and I'm just happy we're getting content. It's, it's, just just the yeah, same as, yeah. as, as Star Wars. Yeah, I went there. Uh, everybody complains. It's the same thing. Same fan base. Yeah, everybody complains. Oh, well, this isn't my Star Wars. Insufferable star- pricks. Yeah, this isn't my Star Wars. Well, you know what? I don't care if I... We just did... Three episodes on Star Wars Acolyte. And was I a massive fan of that series? No. I mean, you can watch it, see my review. I didn't, I wasn't very kind to this series. However, I also left the end of that episode going, 
I'm ready for a season two because I want more Star Wars content. I, you know, I, the amount of people that did not like Ghostbusters Afterlife blows my mind. In my opinion, you couldn't, and we've talked about this, you couldn't move forward any better, in my opinion, from the 80s to come into that now. About how the family and how they, you know, it's his family. and But, like, like when, when she's going through the, the suits and it says Spangler, like, I got, you, you get goosebumps from that. I still get it when I watch that movie because it's like, because you, you know the nostalgia that's there. The new movie, everyone talking shit about it. Pacing, yes, you've said that. We've talked about that. Pacing, yes. But. It wasn't a bad movie. No, I enjoyed it. It wasn't it's a not bad. shit movie. No, listen, I will give you. You Afterlife. are what I don't like. No, I will give you Afterlife wholeheartedly, and that's because I went with my kid to see it, and both my sons enjoyed the hell out of it, and I thought it was done superbly as well. I agree with you, hundred percent there. Now to Frozen Empire was good. Could it have been better if they had more of the of him at the like we needed more of the guy the guy is one thing but like i really am cool without the fire keeper fire master like that dude is an yeah, actor he, just he, he was he was actually <laughs> the worst part of it i mean i agree but i did laugh at him a few times well i mean i get that's were, what he was there but for. they were going for that comedic relief with him and i think they fell short honestly in the way that they kept drowning it out almost like i didn't i would actually love uh, to see a little spinoff maybe like a three-part series you know like in john wick they did the continental I want to see a three-part series of Dan Aykroyd now with his little shop. I don't think Aykroyd would do it, but I like that. That'd be cool. I mean, he yeah, won't yeah. do it, but I think it'd be cool to see it. That'd you know, because really cool. he's got all the weird shit and everything, and you know, whatever. I think that'd be cool. But anyway, it would be, be kind of like the Friday the Thirteenth well, series. Well, hold on. So, okay, so, you do this, and I'm going to explain this movie. So I'm just going to. So, initial reactions. Um, I was hoping for a Super Troopers meets Waiting, and I didn't get it. We'll just say that. And I'll let James kind of take us to where the movie is. So you got a boxer champion who owns a restaurant. Very Rocky Balboa-ish. Yeah, I'll give you that. Um, Who is, uh, uh, you know... I told you it was going to be a Rocky reference, and I didn't even have to say mine. That was a different one, but go ahead. <laughs> um, I know what you're talking about. And he lost the bet to someone in China. They were China. hunting uh, al- 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 albinos. <laughs> which is, <laughs> it was albino Japanese. It's stri- it? And as he said, strictly catch and release. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. But he ends up losing, and he thinks he needs to have ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, by the next day. So um, the whole crew that working has to just bust their ass to try to make money. And I, I, I liked how they had um, Dave and his his brother. You could see the the the. You could see it, it wasn't like the. It was two thousand nine yeah. though. It yeah. wasn't as good. You could see the double in there. I thought he was the best character in the whole movie. Oh, dude. <laughs> what. Which character though? Both, just both. How he did them, both? It yeah. showed how good he could be. Yeah, because he was like the nerdy, and then he was like and the nerdy everybody. And the nerdy reminded me of uh, the dude. Nah, I love lamp dude from Anchorman. Like just when he was himself, he's like because huh, he throwing these weird like obscure comments that were still funny, but then when he turned into Zongo, you're like, no, we're we're not talking about him. Oh, we're talking about the twins. Oh, I see. I like the twins. <laughs> they're they're good, but. <laughs> It's like, I'll fucking kill you. He's got the knife. He's like, you know, like, it's like, oh. <laughs> it's David and Donnie, wasn't it? Yeah. I just Don- like, the, I like the hazing element because we've been, I've been guilty of doing the that. The blue carousel. So, so to give, to give backstory to. a smurf. <laughs> well, to give backstory, like I, uh, I've worked in numerous bars, restaurants forever, managed bar and restaurant. And when I was a kid and I was just a bar back at a nightclub, we had a, a gay nightclub downtown called Bounce. And so all the new barbacks coming out who didn't know what Bounce was, we'd, we'd say we ran out of Miller Lite and we'd send, we'd go, hey, you got to run over to Bounce Nightclub and pick up Case Miller Lite for us. We're out of Miller Lite. We need it bad. So when they walked in and they heard, they say, hey, I'm from, I'm from Funky Buddha. I need a Case of Miller Lite. The dudes they there knew. knew and it, it, everything <laughs> that ensued after, we would like, we'd meet up with them later and like, we'd all have a good joke about it. But they'd come, every single barback would come back and be like, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> it was so good. Well, um, and I don't know all their names because I never really got into it, but the guy who played Mac, 
because I feel like that's how you would actually know him from Super Troopers. He ends up getting a spot on a TV show that it's because he had a big nose. Well, he went and got a nose job and they immediately killed him off. So we had to come back and work. Um, but by the time this is happening, he comes back. They throw out a prize to get the uh, the amount of money made for the night. All hell breaks loose. You know, uh, the, the nuts. If he doesn't take his medication, turns into Zongo, and he's running around with just a apron on his ass out. At one point, he's trying to shove that fish down the guy's throat. <laughs> like, I, w- I, w- I would have appreciated the flashback for him being smothered in peanut butter. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, because he talked about when it happened last time, yeah, and I would have loved... I was naked with peanut butter in they, my they hair. They gave the coleslaw one. <laughs> Let's get the peanut butter one. Like, that should have happened. Um, but, I mean, I, I get what you guys are saying. Like, it, it was not Waiting. I, dude, Waiting is the only movie I ever watched. I watched it three times in a row, back to back. I was laughing so hard at that fucking movie that, like, I just said, hit play. I just start again. <laughs> Dude, so much. There's so much fuckery in waiting. It's the first time you see it, you don't process everything. No. <laughs> yeah, I was whenever I was watching this, and I was within the first hour. And like I said, the first hour bogs for me anyway in this movie. And my wife comes in and goes, "What is this?" I said, "Well, it's a it's a broken lizard movie." She goes, "Well, it looks like it's kind of like waiting." I said, "It wants to be." <laughs> yeah, it wants to be. But here's the thing, like. <laughs> So, so did waiting too. <laughs> so, but I felt like that's where this lacked was the, the, the jokes that like, if you've ever worked in the service industry, industry setting, the commentary between line cooks and servers and the, like you started to get it with the chef, the one twin, uh, you started to get it with him when they were send food back and he'd be like, motherfucker. And he started getting all pissed off. Like that's real. That's how a kitchen is. But like the interactions other than that between the line and the staff was, I, I just, lacking. I, I loved when he's like. Nuke it, and he's like holding it. And like and it's funny because if you don't pay attention, they got the one sh- one cook in the back. As he's going by, he just goes like, you know, like if you don't see it, you you miss it. But like, I don't know. So all the things that happened during this movie, because I can just sum them up real quick. Whole bunch of fuckery. The the one girl who who is a, a ballerina uh, gets that soup thrown in her face and it burns her. JP laughed very hard. He said, "I did too, twice." Uh, a, a very a very high end uh, actor is going to ask his girlfriend to marry him. And as he's putting the ring in the cake, it's in the sunback area. Brownie. The brownie. And so... Farva comes in. Farva comes in and eats it. So now you have to... Now we're waiting for him to shit it out. Which... And it's supposed to be a $450,000 ring. Yeah, $450,000 South African diamonds. I don't know, whatever the hell he said. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of words in there. I can't remember. Um, and then, so they're all just fighting for that. The, I will say it does gross me out every time. So she gets burned again as they're bringing out a cake with candles. A, the cake with candles. The actor has so much alcohol in his drink that he spits it out and it reburns her face again, like a fireball, like a huge fireball. So at this point, she gets set. Her her foretop is a. Uh, it was the Miami Dolphins. Offensive line? Yep. Yeah. And she, she's milking it, and they're into it, and they're ordering this and that. And I mean, like, they're about to literally make her win. And the one guy, Rabbit, walks behind her and blows because he knows it'll blow her hair out because she's burned. <laughs> and they even this had the blood. Good part. They this even had the part. blood in it, and it falls in the water. He's like, that's disgusting. No, what no, no. You're underplaying this, dude. It was so it's good. It's so gross. <laughs> the hair gross. piece that he blows from behind. <laughs> Is a piece that has part of her scalp attached to it still. So there's a chunk, a giant chunk of her scalp comes off with, he goes, and this piece just floats in slow motion almost down into the drink. And when it hits, you see the blood just drip into the water, drip, mix in and swirl. And all the dudes are throwing up. Everything goes Throwing chaos. tables, yeah. pure chaos. <laughs> and it's so funny because like, she's just sitting there going, I just want to win. And I'm just like, you would never act like that. I loved it as she was as they were ordering before that. Uh, they're like, "Yeah, we want a couple of appetizers. I always want two T-bone steaks." Yeah, appetizers. <laughs> See, and it's funny because so um, I had a I, I had a dinner once at Cut Wolfgang Puck's Cut Steakhouse in Vegas, and I had a really nice talk with the waiter. You know, you're paying for your service. You're not paying for the food. The food's really good, but I mean, we're talking like six out steak for six out steak for like hundred dollars you know like this meal cost me 460 dollars. it was insane 
with Tip. But he told me that the three months before I was there, the uh, the full offensive line of the Cowboys came in. They put three waiters on them. The whole total bill was eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, because you got these dudes that are massive, and you're serving them hundred dollars six ounce steaks. Like they need six of them to feel like they ate. <laughs> There's so many Cowboys jokes here, but I'll leave it alone. <laughs> I meant about the team. Why are you? He's like, are you gonna? What are you gonna make fun of me for, Ryan? <laughs> Not you. I, this I just time, stopped James. responding to him in the text because he tries so hard. I don't have to try. <laughs> it's magical. You just provide the material. <laughs> um. Well, I have a question. Yes, sir. Would you like to see them do another Super Troopers? It was uh, there? There've been talks. There's about been talk it. of a third, but I think it's in pre-production from what I read here pretty recently. I guess it would depend upon the script, if I'm being real. Like, uh, like where are they going to go next? Like, what would that, you know? I mean, is it fair to say, like, can we just be happy that, that we're going to get another one? I'll be honest with you. What I would like to see more so than um, Super Troopers 3, a sequel to Club Dread. Oh, no. See, no, I no. would love to see that, too, but I just don't know how you'd do it. It's, you have to remake the same movie, basically. Like, how are you going to give a sequel to that? You'd be honest and call it Club Dreadful. Club Dread was funny. I love Club it, it, Dread. It, I prefer Beer Fest over that. No way. Yes. No. Mm. No. Oh, I, that's because you guys aren't beer guys. I'm a beer guy. Beer, I appreciate it. Beer Fest it. was funny, but no. <laughs> I think um, I think that it's one of those ones that deserves a rewatch. If anything, they should just do Pot Fest and get it over with. That would be a good follow up, if I'm being honest. I mean, they they teased it and then never did it, and that was yeah. what twenty years ago already, almost. I think they got too old. <laughs> Are you ever too old for that? Potheads are potheads till they die. Yeah, but it's it's sometimes you get too old. You're not going for those those cannabis cup competitions anymore. You're just going for the relaxation part. So I don't know. Might be onto something. I, so, you, you know what? Maybe that's the maybe that's the way to go. Maybe they train younger kids and they bring in a new generation, and we get more, and they could have a new rookies class and uh, super troopers or something. You know, expand the broken lizard. Yeah, that'd be good. See, there, oh, there was something else I was about to say. Damn. Oh, so have you guys watched Tacoma FD? Uh, so I've watched. Right. I actually started watching a couple show. Is episodes. hilarious. It's not bad. It's, I like, will say this: Tacoma is way, way, way better than Slam and Salmon. Oh no! The, yeah, no, the show's hilarious. It's it, it's only Farva and Mac, <coughs> and then like trickles, I've seen I've seen commercials. There's like for trickles it, but never, in yeah. of like 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 the Donnie, the guy who played Donnie. He comes in, has a couple parts here, and he has one guy, but he comes in every once in a while. Um, Frenchy, um, I don't know his name though, but like he's he's a beer he's in Beer Fest, one of the Germans, and he was actually in Slam and Sam. He was the guy who was the manager in the beginning before Farva took over. Yeah. He is in it. Okay. As one of the firemen, every once in a while, but like my wife hates Super Troopers. I only get to watch it on my birthday, and I didn't get to watch it this year because we were with Mudvayne, so my birthday got null and void, and I didn't get to watch them this year. But I had it on. She was on her phone, and she starts laughing, and I go, "What are you laughing at?" And she goes, "This is funny," and I go, "I won. I finally won." I'm like. So we watched like two more episodes. And I go, you want to start from the beginning? She goes, yeah. And I'm like, ha, oh, oh. So when I get home, we're going to, I got one more season to go. I finally st- uh, started Big Mouth. Finally started? Finally. You never saw Big I Mouth? Nope. What in the fuck? <laughs> I, so, I still need to go through season, anything after season three. But dude, did you, so you saw the second, se- the second episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I just finished the the period episode. <laughs> yeah, <that's>, yeah. <laughs> Fuck her face! <laughs> so that's a good segue to say slam and salmon. Uh, <laughs> no, dude, it, you you. The second season's even funnier because like Jake is talking about something, and the hormone monsters is just like, "This kid's a fucking prodigy." <laughs> like it's just. <laughs> if you don't know, it's it's a Nick crawl series from, I, I know uh, of the series i just yeah. haven't watched it from uh, uh the league you gotta watch it i know I you would be. love it i'm still rewatching the league because you idiots and it's well worth it <laughs> <laughs> peace little tiny rick dick 
Ah, Slam and Salmon. Pete didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> I, I don't really have anything to say. You guys don't like the movie. I loved it. Don't give a shit. These are, I, these are the kind of movies that I like to watch because it's like I don't have to like focus. Well, movies for me have been turned into relaxation, just not really paying attention. I love movies for good, dumb fun. I sincerely do. Uh, so, so uh, I can understand that, and I get it. And like I said, this wasn't this movie wasn't horrible. It's just my least favorite of what I've yeah. seen so far. I didn't hate it, but it was definitely my least favorite of of the Broken Lizard. Broken Lizard. For um, sure. The now had had the whole movie been as funny as the last quarter of the movie. So if they just did a whole movie on Zongo, you'd be okay. Well, no, <laughs> no. But, I mean, but look, they they literally. I feel like it was just lacking in dry compared to other efforts from them because they. It was almost like jokes that were safe. If that makes sense, like most of it, some of it was a little out there, great, but most of it was safe, and it just didn't make me chuckle. I well, don't... yeah, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't the same as. But that was kind of where I was Super going Troopers, with that. where it was with, with, uh, out the gate. I want a mustache ride. Yeah, you know stuff like that. That's a big thing. You're going to hear me talk about that in another review we have to do in the near future. But that's one of my big problems. Is like we're going to say our favorite word, pacing. I think you already said it this episode too. Um, but like, yeah, that first hour dragged hard. Dude. Yeah. I was. I didn't laugh the whole first hour. I, I literally sat there and was like, "I think uh, why is this not funny? Why I, is this not funny? I couldn't understand why." Since the party am, animal, um, I have not said it once to Jess because Jess and I started watching this last night together, and uh, I looked over and I go, "What the fuck did I get stuck watching?" <laughs> like I didn't. I didn't want to watch it for. I had a moment like you where you were at the airport and you didn't want to watch one movie. I forgot what it was. But like I just I, I but I'm glad it came around. I'm glad I stuck through it because it did get better. Yeah, no, it, it did. I I was the same way. I was sitting there and I was like, I I just don't I don't I'm not get, am I not getting these jokes or is so, this just not funny? And then all of a sudden it was just like something finally clicked in the movie. It was like then it started getting funny. So despite our our banter and rambling, there is a story here in this movie, and the story is that Michael Duncan Clark's character owns a restaurant called the Slam and Salmon, and. Even though the name suggests otherwise, the restaurant itself looks like it's fine dining. Looks like it's it's a little more high profile. It it's not a bad restaurant. Push the fish. Push the fish. Uh, but the cod is one of the most expensive things right, on their menu. Right. Thirty eight dollars. The reason they're pushing these high end <laughs> items is because Michael Duncan Clark's character is indebted to the yakuza. And, and, and he, well, and Dave bought fish that didn't sell, and it's a week old. I forgot <laughs> about that, but yes. Um, and so the Yakuza part plays a big thing. And so he comes in and he, Manager Farva, uh, sorry, we're using Super Trooper names, but Manager Farva, essentially, he's telling him, and he has no backbone to speak up to Michael Duncan Clark because Michael Duncan Clark's character is a former boxer who threatens to kill everyone who doesn't agree with him, essentially. And as they're moving forward, though, he basically tells Farva, hey, I need 20 grand tonight. You guys have to do whatever you have to do to make it. I'm going to stop back at a certain time to check on your progress. And we're going to make sure that you're there. And if you don't, you have to deal with the consequences. And he's basically saying he will threaten to kill them. At this point, Farva essentially offers, he's already offered one prize for the highest selling server for the night, which was Nora Jones tickets. And uh, no one was jumping at that, obviously. And so then he uses Michael Duncan Clark's character's name at a hotel that he frequents. And he says, hey, I need a four day pass, essentially, for the, for the hotel use. And he gets a comp. And so he offers this prize to the uh, to the wait staff if they bring in the high ring. This gives them incentive, and they all are kind of doing something. And they're just making sales. Michael Dunn Clark then says ten thousand dollars the highest ringer, and not even thinking about how it maths out. And then the servers all kind of are stepping on each other at this point. They're all kind of fighting for who's going to get the highest ring, who's getting tables. Um, Max character is making deals with the hostess to be sat uh, more than others with good tables. There's a little bit of a maniacal thing going on. And it kind of escalates from there. You get into the end of the episode. Colby Smulders, by the way, uh, what was her name in, in uh, Avengers? Yeah, it was Agent. Uh, God, I can't remember her name now. I don't know, but I was watching How I Met Your Mother with a wife recently, and I always thought she had brown eyes. And then out of, out of nowhere, season three, they started emphasizing her blue eyes. And I was like, man, she's good looking. All right. this is good. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with brown eyes, but I didn't know she had the blue eyes. And they popped all of a sudden. I was like, huh. So I saw them even more in this in this movie. But um, 
Then you got people coming in like um, Lance Fredrickson, who's playing a director of a film with uh, Morgan Fairchild. Morgan Fairchild. And they're all sitting at a table, and they were they actually had cast the character of Max. Uh, I don't know the actual server name. Um, but they had what? cast him in the show because he had a big nose at the time, and he gets a nose job. And he sees them there. They're like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And he's kind of embarrassed that he has to serve his former employer and work uh, colleagues. Connor. Connor, yes. And so uh, little bits happen there. There's a whole bunch of fun that kind of ensues that makes it worthy. As But according to these guys, they didn't do a good enough job of putting it together. I don't think I, – I, I think it could have been better. I, no, I, wait, no, wait I better. agree. I yeah. agree. But I just – it's them. So, I like, it's these guys. Like, I'm, I'm one of those guys where it's like – if you do it, they really almost anything they put out, I'll probably watch it just because it's them. And her name was Maria Hill. Maria Hill, that's right, yeah. Agent Hill. Um, yeah, but no, the, the movie goes in a great direction. The funny, the funnier, other than the multiple burns that the one waitress takes, because uh, every time it happens, she's like, "I'm not going to give up. I'm going to win this," and she just looks worse and worse to the point where people are like, "Please get away from my table. I'm losing my appetite." Well, it's like the the bald guy. The, the, so that guy that she was like leaning in, he's like, "Go away." He is the um, dean or principal or whatever for the in the community. He was. The show the community. He was like the guy in charge mm-hmm. of the college. I have not watched Community. Is that worth a watch? Yes, it's okay. only like three seasons. I love Donald Glover. Well, well, back Glover's then. great, and then the um, the other guy that's always with him. I can't remember his name, but he's. But I've seen Joel live do comedy. He's actually really funny. Did you hear all the rumors going around today? Which ones? Lando. I haven't heard that. That's my Star Wars reference for you. Lando supposedly got canceled. They're not going to move forward with it. So, no Donald Glover, no more Lando. Um, I found the ending of this very predictable. Sure. With uh, the guy that read, was reading War and Peace. I, I did, too. I didn't expect him to just get hit and die right away. I, out the well, door, it, was, it was funny because we were sitting there watching, and... I said, "Oh, he's gonna he's gonna give like a massive tip, and this guy's gonna get it." Uh, and I knew that as soon as he gave the other waiter gave this this table to the Donnie character, <clears throat> and as soon as he he said he was dying and this and that, and he got out and he slow walked out the front door, and I said, "And this is where he gets hit by a car." And my wife goes, "Huh?" And then about that time, a horse comes by and plows him o- plows over him. And I was like, "This is like really really fucking predictable for me," but. One it was it was amusing, but it was very predictable. One of the, my favorite parts of the movie early on, well, it was it was in the first half. It was one of the redeeming moments because it was a realistic restaurant approach. Was uh, the line check item they put out the food and the way the servers all just devoured it? Like that's real shit, bro. That is real shit because they all come in for those that for those food items. Um, but towards the end, right right a little bit after that is uh, my favorite part. So they've. They've only raised nineteen thousand dollars and seventeen cents of the twenty thousand they needed to make. So Michael Duncan Clark is threatening to kick everyone's ass. He's taking the server's tips, which we all know wouldn't happen. A server would kill. Um, he's taking their their tips and he's saying, "I'm going to make the twenty thousand out of that." Um, and someone, I forgot how it gets brought up. Someone goes, "So wait a minute, you owe the Yakuza money?" It's Maria Hill. Mar- Maria Hill. Yeah. Uh, well, how, was it? Was it? What he said was it? Uh, he goes, yeah, I owe him twenty thousand yen. Yen, that's right. Yeah, and, yeah. And she goes twenty thousand yen. He she goes, that's not the same as dollars. She goes, yen dollars. It is all the same or something like that. Yeah, yeah. and it ends up being like just a, like a hundred and it's like, like hundred seventy bucks. Yeah. yeah, and so he takes the hundred and seventy, <laughs> gives them the other money, and Maria Hill's character gets the ten thousand dollar prize. They had made money and revenue in the restaurant. Everyone got their tips, and it was a happy ending. Blah blah blah. This was the first time Kevin Heffernan directed a film for them. Which one was Kevin? Kevin is Farva. Disappointing. Disappointing, Farva. Well, that's his first. Because I think he directs, I think he does help direct Coma FD, and that is hilarious. His well, fall he, down the stairs was great. Didn't he direct uh, Dukes of Hazard? Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he did. I'm trying to find how much this movie cost to make. and I just I cannot reason, find I, it. Yeah. I looked I looked yesterday. There is no numbers on I can't find how it, much this movie cost. I did find it. this. Domestic box office did forty one thousand and international did nineteen thousand, so it did a total of sixty thousand. Yeah, there's no like. I mean, sixty million. Yeah, well, it's, they did it. Yeah, <laughs> Will Forte is um, that guy's yeah, name, by the way. Yeah. But in Blu-ray sales, 
Blu-ray sales did pretty good. It's not awful. It's not great, but it's not awful. For being who I mean, they are. Half a million dollars in Blu-ray sales. I mean. All right. Re- rewind for me for a moment. I have a more important pressing matter than what sales it had. I was unaware that Olivia Munn was in this. How did I miss her? Which she one? She is the one that was getting engaged. Oh, that yes. was her. Yeah, yeah. You know what I liked about that that process is that despite this the guy. the diamond getting eaten, well, she didn't. They presented her as the annoying. She looked homely partner. too. Yeah. Um, so that's the only reason because I I still have visions of her in the sleeve bikini outfit and sugar plums dancing in my head. So. <laughs> By the way, that sleeve outfit just sold for one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars auction. That. It should be in a museum. It, should not it be in absolutely house. should. It absolutely or my house. But anyways, um, <laughs> 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 uh, but that whole scene was actually kind. That was kind of brilliant. That I will give credit to because the whole process of waiting for <laughs> waiting for the ring to come out of uh, Farber's ass, him digging it out of the toilet, then they put it into the dessert again, and she eats it. That was fucking hilarious. But they came up to the table and said, okay, this is going to take an hour for us to get this ready. And they're trying to like hint like you're going to have to deal with it and wait for an hour. That hour not only made um, the the guy that was proposing have to sit and talk to her about housing. Stuff she did, things, he did not he, care. Stuff he didn't care about. Tell me what you're going to do with that room. But you saw his face by then. He's like, am I really marrying this woman? Like <laughs> you, you could tell like he had thought through it. He's like, I don't I don't know if she's the one. Well, she, he was so disgusted too when she was eating the brownie and pulled the ring out and everybody was just like, about to vomit because they knew that it came Ugh. out of Farva's ass. Yeah. Twice. Twice. Because the, the diamond separated from the ring and yeah. you heard the diamond hit the... Yeah. And then magically they're just able to put a diamond back in its setting. Yep, magically. Pliers. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did not miss you guys. <laughs> I had to spend a whole... How many weeks with him on tour? Uh, I know he's been walking funny since he got back. We talked about that. <laughs> he hurt me. I didn't do shit. <laughs> did he tell you? I, I did. The one show, I had to put his bass on him and plug it in. He couldn't bend over. His his back hurt so bad. It hurt. It was, okay. I, felt, I didn't know how he was going to play, to be honest. You know you I shouldn't know use your guitar straps as, as I was, holders, right? I really did not know. And then it's funny because the one night, Waylon's like, they only had us for a 30-minute. And Julie's like, I'll get it fixed. And I'm like, I don't know. Maybe we should just play a 30 for <laughs> JP. <laughs> like, we might just want to... Just just suck this one up. <laughs> was that the last show or was that the uh, I it was no, it was the next to last. It was the one you had sold to put, out. It was the one you had to put the guitar oh, on. Oh, that's a good thing we did though. That was a good night. Yeah, I didn't move much that night. He it stayed, was he stayed right here and he gave me and Waylon enough room to go run the front. <laughs> like it was kinda like watching Finger Eleven. The bass player stays in the back. Like that's kind of what happened that night. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. I didn't know how I was. I, when he put the, my base on me, I was sitting there going, well, the, this, "I don't know if I can even. I can't even take a step." This is the worst of it. So he was bent over trying to get the base, and the singer from Mood Fever, Tristan, nicest guy ever, got him warmed up for you, boys. Have a good one. And he slaps both of us on the back at the same time because he didn't know. And all you hear is him go, oh! <laughs> like he just, <laughs> like, and it's so loud in there, like no one could hear it. And I'm just like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, he's done. He can't play. <laughs> like, it's over. <laughs> it hurt. It hurt bad. I don't envy it. That pain is not fun. Old. Uh, no, Jeep roll for me. <laughs> old. We won't get into the ratings. Yeah, let's go. I give it a three and a half. You were supposed to go last. It's your movie. Don't care. Beating you to it. Jesus Christ. Suck it. Go ahead. I don't hate this movie. However, it is my least favorite Broken Lip. We we have established this. It's if you want to watch a movie that's like Waiting, watch Waiting. Don't watch this film. However, if you're a Broken Lizard fan and you feel like you need to watch this film, then the last half of the movie isn't bad. It's it's okay. I mean, I'm going to say it sits almost in the middle, and I'm going. I think I'm going to be generous with my rating. I'm going to give it a two point eight. Oh, you went higher than me. Yeah, I, I said I'm being generous. I went. I went right in the middle, so I'm two point five. So I'm right in the same ballpark, but still, you're a little higher. That yeah, the this one just didn't grab me, and it's not that I, I really had high hopes for this movie because of this fucker. 
because uh, I was hoping maybe finally he'd pick a good one. <laughs> I know how I feel about both of you. <laughs> Anyways. It took me five hours last night to watch a movie. That's an hour and 40 minutes long. You didn't even complete the task. I had to keep... No, I did. What, did you miss a movie? What movie didn't you get I mean, to? Because his took times three to watch. Yeah, the re- we'll, we'll get into that one next. I think, I think my pick was way better than I do Slim too. I'll give you that. And maybe, I mean, I get it to you because it's exactly <laughs> every other movie that you love to watch. It's exactly like... Well, it is we'll, we'll Starship talk, we'll, Troopers, we'll, just just not as like no, starshipy. No, it's not Starship oh, Troopers. Oh, bullshit. It no, is Ghostbusters. It is more Ghostbusters. 100%. I mean, Ivan Reitman, yeah. yeah. But anyways, well, let's finish this one out. So, he was a 3.5, 2.7, 2.5. So, uh, I thought I think, he was a 3.0. He went 3. Point, I thought he went 3.5, 3.7. It's a horrible Trump face. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what just happened. But anyways. He got sad. Yeah. Disagree. That's all right. What's not, the with the rating, not with the rating. Not with the rating. Not with the rating. I've already moved on to the, like, we can... See ya. <laughs> three <laughs> senators at gmail dot com. I'll wait till I'll say it again so it's every laughed over three senators <laughs> at gmail dot com. Caca. Caca. <laughs> That's it. First of all, that cackle right there. We're just gonna finish it on that cackle. Like, share, and follow. Peace out. <laughs> Review. Love ya. <laughs>